Hi, today we're going to be looking at the new Ixen T380 soldering station and this one is a little bit different from the existing systems from Ixen in that this one doesn't have a power supply built in. It is designed to run from either a USB-C power supply or the internal battery pack. So we've got a lithium battery pack here, uh, almost 20 watt hours, which we install into the back of the unit. And the idea is that in normal use, when you're working at the bench, for example, you can plug it into your USB-C power supply and it will keep the battery charged and it will also power the soldering iron. But should you wish to use the system away from your bench or where you haven't got a power source, it will continue to run from the internal battery pack for maybe 30 or 40 minutes so that you can do some soldering in a portable fashion. So this unit is designed to use only the T115 or T210 hand pieces. Unfortunately, it's not compatible with the T245. There is a slightly different pin configuration on the T245, which stops you inserting it into the back of the unit. But this one came with the T210. It also came with a couple of sponge grips, which you can slide over to make the handpiece a little bit more comfortable to hold. Then we get one soldering cartridge with it, and I believe there are some different configurations available depending on who you buy it from. And then it came with a USB-C power lead and a 96 watt power supply. Uh, and this one, uh, it supports power delivery up to 20 volts output. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a UK adapter here. I'm not sure if there is one available when you buy it from AliExpress, but it came with a European Shuko type one and one for the American market but it is obviously a universal input power supply. But for the purposes of this, you can actually run it from pretty much any USB-C power supply that's capable of running the iron and charging the battery. Now, later in this video, we're gonna be using some test PCBs, a little bit like these two here. And if you wanna make some like this or any other PCB, you can visit our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. So this video is sponsored by PCB Way, who offer a wide range of manufacturing services for your project, including PCBs from very low cost prototype boards to more advanced PCBs all the way up to 60 layers and also with specialist FR4 materials. You can also get your rigid flex PCBs made if you want to make something a little bit more interesting. They also offer a wide range of PCB assembly options. That means getting your PCBs assembled with components on there on both sides of the board, whether they be surface mount or through hole parts. And they also offer some mechanical services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and also when you're making something with a little bit higher volume, you can also get some injection molding done here. So don't forget to visit pcbway.com. So when you take the unit out of the packaging, the first thing you notice is how heavy the unit is. It weighs over a kilogram without the battery installed, and they've changed the construction technique quite considerably from the existing stations. And this one is made from a cast aluminium, but it's literally like seven, maybe eight millimeters thick all over. It is really built like a brick and feels very good quality. Uh, they've got the Ixen branding on the side. It looks like uh, this sponge area at the front you can remove. There's a screw here and it appears to be separate from the rest of the unit. Uh, and then on the front here, we've got the cradle for holding the soldier knife. So this looks pretty much the same as the other Ixen stations. You can adjust the height, so you twiddle the knob and then you can move this up and down depending on your preference. It's generally best to have it as shallow as possible so that the heat doesn't travel back up into the soldering iron handle itself when it's in the cradle. Then we've got an OLED display on the front. We've got a couple of menu buttons here. Possibly slight confusingly, we've got an up button and an up button and then a enter button, I think it is. Uh, but these have different functions depending on where you are in the menu structure. At the top here, we've got the typical assembly that we see for taking the cartridges out of the handpiece should you wish to change them while the iron is still hot, along with five areas to store your cartridges. Again, the branding on this side, some air vents, uh, some details about the system. So uh, nine to 15 volts, 80 watts rated power. Although I don't think you can actually get 80 watts into the T210 uh, cartridges, but at least it sounds like the electronics in here is capable of 80 watts. Uh, it supports power delivery or quick charge. It tells you it takes the two handles, T210 and T115, and we can set the temperature of the handpiece between 100 and 450 degrees C. Interestingly, we've got a CE logo as well as the various uh, logos on here. At the back, we have the USB-C power port. We've got the connector for the handpieces. 
And yeah, as I said, on the T245 handpiece, we don't have this pin just here and you physically can't put the handpiece connector into here. And then this is the battery compartment. Uh, so there we go, we've got it out. And there is a connector. So we insert the battery pack into here, connect this up to the battery, and then it will keep it topped up with charge or run it from the battery when we don't have a USB-C power supply. And then just on the bottom, we've got a couple of grips and a couple of screws to hold it together. But yeah, this thing is extremely weighty and feels very good quality. The USB-C power supply that comes with it feels pretty good quality. It's quite heavyweight. We've just got the one USB-C connector on the front here. We've got some markings on the bottom, so it's made by Godmobi Inc. Universal input voltage and it supports power delivery 3.1, uh, 20 volts, 15, 12, 9 and 5 volts. We've got a few markings there to suggest potentially some compliance there and it's rated for 96 watts. Now, it, as I said, it doesn't come with a UK connector, unfortunately, but you can remove this and replace it with the American one. I'm not sure if this is a standard format, whether you can buy a UK one, uh, but it should work, as I said, with any standard USB-C power supply. Here's the battery pack. It's a pair of 18650s. It looks like it was newly manufactured, at least into this two cell configuration. Uh, giving a 7.4 volts output and about 20 watt hours. Now the soldering station is rated for 80 watts, but I don't think you'll get 80 watts into a T210 cartridge. We'll do some measurements later, uh, but I would expect um, more like 40 watts peak into a T210. So you could expect somewhere from half an hour to maybe a couple of hours soldering, depending on how intense the soldering is that you're doing and how much the unit consumes when it's not heating the cartridge. But we'll do some measurements in a moment. So here's what the unit looks like inside. It comes apart quite easily, just a few screws, and then you can see it separates into two halves. So we've got this substantial enclosure. Then we've got an electrical connection, first of all, to the tip change area, so it can detect when you're changing the cartridge, and then also to the chassis, which is used to detect when the handpiece is in the cradle, so it can go into sleep mode. Then we've got the electronics block, which we'll look at in more detail but it comprises of sort of all of the main electronics and then a display assembly. So the electronics is split into three PCBs. This is the PCB at the very back that connects to the back panel connector. So here, for example, you can see the connector to the solder iron and it seems to go to this array of switching MOSFETs. We've got a large inductor with four MOSFETs around that. So I'm not sure if they're feeding variable DC into the iron rather than just pulsing it on and off like we typically see on the other systems. Uh, but that's the back assembly. It's got the connection for the battery as well on there. The next PCB is the one with the microcontroller on it. So you can see there we've got Giga Devices GD32F303 32-bit microcontroller. And then we've got a DC to DC converter here. So this is a synch synchronous book converter with a South Chip SC8201 controller just here. And on the underside of the PCB, we've got various support electronics, another little DC to DC converter here. But it looks like this is so that we can generate the appropriate voltages when we're running from the battery power. And then the third PCB is the one that's in the front panel module. And they've also located the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip at the front here because with the metal enclosure, you wouldn't actually get very good signal. So this is the only bit where we've got plastic to the outside world. So they're using a module off the shelf. It looks like they're just using the AT command set to communicate with this through two wires on the Flexi and the rest are for the OLED on the front panel and the buttons. Right, first of all, let's have a look at the user interface. The battery is not connected at the moment, so it's not showing that it's charging, but I've got this connected to my Ugreen 300 watt GAN charger. So the power monitor is actually pretty accurate because it's highly efficient. Uh, but basically on the display, it shows us that this is the T380. It's detected that I've got the T210 handpiece connected. Uh, this is the internal temperature of the microcontroller, so the thermocouple measurements are correct. And then it's saying it's in sleep, obviously the handpiece is in the cradle. And then this is the temperature of the cartridge. Now we can adjust the temperature up and down. Now in my opinion, these two buttons are the wrong way around. This side, we increase the temperature. And this one, we decrease the temperature. We've also got presets, so we can press this button to go through, so memory 3, memory 1, and memory 2. And if we want to store a new temperature, we can increase the temperature slightly. And then we hold down the two outside buttons, and that stores that temperature 
in the last used memory slot. So that's just how you generally use it. There is a user interface uh, menu. So you hold down this button here and then it briefly tells you what the buttons do. And you do have to remember that because it's a little bit confusing. Um, so first of all, language. And we can pick between Chinese and English. Um, and then we've got sound. Now we'll scroll down with that button. And there is a beeper in there on the PCB. And I think if we press this one, we can turn that on and off. Go down to units. And obviously we can pick between Celsius and Fahrenheit. Uh, we can do a factory reset. We can set the time. And then we've got the system info as well, which says this is version one, the T380. And this looks like when it was manufactured. And that's about it. So no calibration as far as I can see on this unit. So uh, we will have a look to see how accurate the readings are, but it doesn't have that capability to adjust it as far as I can see. The literature suggests that we can heat up the cartridge in one to two seconds or so. So let's try it and see how much power it also uses to do that. So I think that's about two, maybe three seconds, but it peaked at about 70 watts there. Let's put some power into this damp sponge. And yeah, 75 watts into this little cartridge. So they are pushing it quite hard, but that does mean it should perform pretty well. With the battery connected, we can see it started charging and it's drawing about 34 watts. So it'll probably be charged after about 30 or 40 minutes from a completely dead battery. Next, let's have a quick look at the calibration. So we'll clean off the tip and tin it for the first time. And we're set to 330. And it looks like we're pretty accurate, about 334, so well within specifications for the IPC. So one thing that's interesting to note is when the battery pack is attached, we seem to be drawing a combination of power from the external power supply and the battery because the peak power draw from the external power supply seems to be somewhere around 20 to 30 watts now. So that does mean you could use a lower power DC power supply. The other thing worth mentioning is they don't seem to have implemented sort of a sleep temperature. When you put the handpiece in the cradle, it does turn the heater off entirely. Now it's not too much of a problem because it does heat up very fast. But I think a firmware improvement would be at least to allow the reduced temperature mode when we're connected to the USB power supply because I can see why they do it when it's running from battery to say power but we may as well have that reduced temperature mode when we're connected to the USB supply so that it's just a little bit quicker when you're transferring between the cradle and doing some soldering. Next we'll see if there are any firmware updates because this one can be updated with the Ixen app on a PC. So we'll connect the USB cable that I've got connected to my PC to the back of the unit. So at the moment we've got software version 1 and the latest version of the software is version 1. So no updates just yet. But if it was there then we'd be able to click start upgrading and the firmware would be updated nice and quickly. Now when we're running completely off battery so we haven't got anything connected here we can shut down the station. We hold down this button here for a few seconds. And then it says, do you want to shut down? And you press yes. And then it goes into a shutdown mode where it's not drawing power from the battery. When we want to turn it back on, we just press the button in the middle and then it powers back up. And so with no USB connector in the back here, we can heat up the soldering iron, as you can see. And this is a high thermal demand PCB, four layers, solid copper.
and it will still heat that solder up and melt it quite nicely on those pads exactly as it would have done with the USB-C power supply attached. We've got a current clamp attached to the battery cable so let's heat it up and see how much power we draw and so peak current there of about 8 amps or so and if we heat up this high thermal demand board it's more like about 3 amps or so and then just in free air that seems to drop to about 750 milliamps or so and then we put the handpiece back in the cradle and it drops to very low currents. Now I wouldn't trust the accuracy of this particular clamp meter at low currents but it looks like we're drawing sort of less than 100 milliamps or so to have the system running. So the Eitzen T380 seems to be a really nice soldering station. It does perform well and really I can't tell any difference between this and a standard mains T210 powered soldering station. So I think they've done a good job here. The one thing that I'd like to see in terms of a firmware update is that when it's plugged into a USB power port that we can go into a sleep temperature rather than just turning the heater off because there is a slight delay when it's cold and when you can start soldering. If you can imagine you've got your PCB right next to it, you take it out the cradle, you're ready to start soldering here and then only now can you actually start soldering once it's reached 350. So a sort of setback temperature would be good but for battery power absolutely turning off the iron completely makes complete sense but overall it seems to be a well-performing station with absolutely no problems, so a really nice piece of kit. Uh, if you are interested in buying this or taking a look at it, I'll put links to the Ericsson website and an AliExpress listing for this in the description down below. And if you want to make some PCBs like my test PCBs that I used for soldering, don't forget to visit the sponsor for this video, PCBWay at PCBWay.com. But anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.